Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here, and today we're going doing sort of a special sort of video because we're going to talk about doing airsoft on a budget. Now, when I first started airsoft, I had my cheap little SEMA AK-74, little stubby version, really nice gun, 120 bucks, cheap, buddy gave me a ton of magazines and a bunch of random gear, and I had my old Marine Corps issue LVV, low bearing vest, and I put some mag pouches on there, and that was it. Is that some goggles? I should have had a mask, but people didn't tell me that back then, so get a mask. You can get cheap eye pro. But what I wanted to do ever since, because I've sort of moved up, cry precision, LBT plate carrier, a bunch of crazies, and well, as of recently, a polar star. Of course, mind you, this took over the course of three years. This took time. This was a very slow process of finding what I liked and what I didn't like, so airsoft doesn't have to be expensive. One of its main selling points is that it's exponentially cheaper than paintball. And they, oh, well, paintball these marks on people. Not always. The balls tend to roll off most people from the games I played anyway. But that aside, Airsoft. Doesn't have to be expensive. Like I was mentioning, $120 SEMA little AK. AKs are pretty nice. You can get other guns. They have little M4s and stuff. But you could get a cheap gun. It's going to be an AEG generally. AEGs are going to break down. A bunch of small moving parts is going to cause problems. But the key purpose for this video and I'll do this into an entire series later on and even run a game to show you guys how well a cheap sort of setup room works. What we have is our Eagle Industries issued sort of magazine bandolier. Now this wasn't generally designed to be your run into combat and do all sorts of shooty shooty bang bang work. No, this is designed to basically just hold, as you see, six magazines. But this, as you can generally find it, brand new, mind you, with even some molly on the back if you want to mount it or do some other crazy stuff, $10. It's Japanese thousand yen. It's not much. And all you gotta do is just sling this over your arm, and congratulations, you're now in World War II era of uh, shooting things. And a lot of World War II and even parts of Vietnam, if you weren't wearing your crazy stuff, you had a bandolier extra ammo. Extra ammo was not fast back in the day. We're talking a lot more old school. Now in the jungle, this isn't going to get caught up on a lot of things, whereas your plate carriers and stuff will generally get branches and stuff stuck in them. This is very small and very out of the way. Now we only have the aluminum mags in here, although it will hold P-mags. P-mags and anything that looks like a P-mag is generally going to be a bit more useful if it has that little pull tail. Because as you can see here, the magazines sit pretty deep. So if you're out there, not to mention you got a butt in it if you want to keep magazine retention. You're out there, you're going bang, 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 bang. Uh-oh. So you drop out your magazine. You pop this open. You reach in here. You grab a new mag. Insert. And for your spare mag, if you want to keep it safe, if there's time, rebuckle. Boom. Bang, 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 bang. And then, of course, your little dump pouch. Because most people don't like dump pouches, but dump pouches will keep your magazine safe and unstolen. So. Now this, as I was mentioning, had a little... Uh, was it the low bearing vest from the Marine Corps left over? It was nice. I could carry my mags in there. Like a few in the uh, little, was it the two mag pouches and then like a little triple mag. What was it LBT? Well, no, it was Tactical Tailor. Tactical Tailor had my little three mag bungee set up. So fast mags and slow axis mags. And this, even if you're not doing budget airsoft, if you're wearing your plate here and everything and someone goes, hey, we're going on an extended op. We're going to be out there for a long time. We're going to need a lot of extra ammo. Now, if you're the quiet type, you fill this with mid caps like I've got here. You throw that over a shoulder, throw it over both shoulder, shoulders, just get it out of the way. And now you've got extra mags sort of sitting around. They're going to fly around a bit, but they're not going to be too crazy depending on how you're moving. And if you cross body them, they're even more so the way you can move them to your back. If you don't have a pack or anything. Although if you have a pack, you can also fill out with mags. But the great thing is, these aren't going to rattle and bang around. So you've got extra ammo for your team, you've got your own setup of ammo, and you're good. So even outside, uh, excuse me, even outside of budget, you still have a lot of things you can get done. So if you are more on a budget, let's say you're not the quiet player. Let's say the enemy's going to know you're there, your gear's rattling around, you're a complete disaster. However, even if you have two of these, you can get a bunch of the 500 round speed loaders. Now, instead of just having extra ammo, you now have a bunch of, well, rattling mag boxes, but you are now technically the portable armory. 
as long as everyone's keeping you safe, there's plenty of ammo to go around because someone could just get you and to get the speed loader and you're now reloading mags and tossing them back out to people, keeping everyone loaded up. So, it's a classic throwback, the Mandolier. It doesn't get the love it deserves anymore because everyone wants to be super high speed. But you don't always have to be high speed. There's been very, very few, actually, I could believe this is going to be a completely different video, but there's been very few to almost no times I've ever had a problem where I went into a situation and needed a speed reload. There are entire videos discussing whether or not you need speed reloading as all the fast space cool kids like to do. Because generally most of the situations I've been in, if I've run out of ammo, I've had people backing me up, or B, I haven't run out of ammo because in the middle of an engagement when there's a lull, I'll be like, I think fired off about 100 rounds there, we got about 20 left in the mag, let's go ahead and swap that out with a new mag. So we're ready. You want to be ready. You want to avoid situations where you run out of ammo, it won't always be an ideal situation. When you do run out, you either should have a handgun, although I don't like handguns generally, I'd rather be using my grenade launcher to begin with, but if you run out of ammo, you should be able to. Like, this isn't a fast thing, and I could get the mag out relatively quickly, I mean, we're not in fire, we're not going to have a snap, let me get that still there, okay, cool. It's still doable. The more gear you have, the more difficult it becomes, but it's doable. There's plenty of ammunition. Even if I run into a really bad situation, and I'm in a small corner and I can't maneuver, I can still force the mags out, and you can throw mags on the ground. Okay, these don't force out as well. I lie. I'm a dirty liar. Don't listen to anything I say. But hey, so you got the mags here. You can get them out. And if one of your guys is up farther ahead, and he's in all sorts of trouble, no one could get to him, you can still... I don't know if the fields are generally going to allow this, but you can always chuck the mags at him and help him out. Probably not so in Japanese fields, because they don't even like you throwing a grenade any more than underhand. And even then, it's only like 10 meters, so... Anyway, so the whole thing I wanted to get to is, we have this cool little pouch. It's got these massive buttons. Pop that open, there's the two mags in there. And yeah, brand new, 10 bucks. I think it was like $4 for shipping. You got your strap here with a little soda in there and D-ring on the other side. Information, magazine pouch. And you got your extra six by three double spaced molly. And you've got these little ringlets down here for any whatever reason. I'm sure they're some from some more archaic time where people probably did other things with them, but you can well, I mean, you could technically put these in together, but what you can do, so with some Malice Clips from Tactical Tailor, if you are really ghetto, you can strap this right onto your plate carrier directly and not buy extra magazine pouches and just use these, which would be pretty comical. It's an option. And, um, yeah, you can also mount, I guess you can mount frag grenades. You can mount, like, what, six flashbangs on here if you really wanted to, so carry a bunch of grenades. You can carry a bunch of other team helpful stuff and then just keep this out of the way. So... You could probably even put a breacher's bag on here that you would fill up with claymore. It's carry an extra claymore. There you go. Ten bucks. It's cool stuff. So you don't need to go super expensive with all the stuff you're going to do. And I just really wanted to come with this magazine pouch because I thought it was cool. This will be the, I guess, the slow speed dated sort of bandolier. Grey Ghost Gear makes a six mag bandolier. is trying to get off of my buddy that belts on, much like the uh, Tactical Tailor grenade belt or anything of that nature. It's got the little buckle clip, the little adjuster strap, and it's got just elastic bands that you put the magazine through. Do that with some uh, P mags or any type of mag pull sort of setup with the little thing. You can now go bang, 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 and then quick pull mag free insert. Done. So yeah, cheap gun, cheap magazine pouch, mag carrier for a slower version. And uh, yeah, you can throw in a handgun there if you want to. I'm always going to emphasize that your primary weapon is far better. And the only purpose for your secondary is to get to your primary and to get your primary back up. If you can't get your primary back up in time, that's when you use a secondary. Switching to your pistol is faster than reloading. Not always. I mean, with slower mag pouches like this, perhaps. But generally, you should be well within cover or well reloaded before you make an advance. So. That's what I got for you guys. Just a short little video about this cool little piece of gear I found. That's archaic, but also pretty cool and still valuable in the modern day world. If you're looking for this, just eBay. Six mag pouch. M16, M4. And yeah, if you 
You just want to carry your magazines in something well protected and relatively safe. There you go. There you go, guys. And if you get really crazy, I'm talking really crazy, you could put a D ring back here, some 550 cord and a little ring setup. Run 550 cord from here through that ring and back down to here. And you've got yourself a ghetto chest rig. And you run one more piece of some type of elastic or buckle between here and here. And you've got your back support. And you've built yourself the world's most ghetto, but yet somehow effective chest rig. Do it yourself. Don't waste more money than you have to. Don't make the same mistake I did. But yeah, if you can save money, you should. And this will be useful even as you advance up into higher grade gear that you may or may not need. And you can still carry extra mags in longer games. Particularly out here in Okinawa, most games are going to be on a tiny field. You're not going to have to worry about it. If they do do an hour-long respawn game, you can carry this. Save yourself time on the reloads, or you can carry a bunch of speed loaders and reload your mags on the go. So, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be doing more of these budget videos here in a second. Well, as time comes and I'm able to get more budget gear. I'll pull up some of my old stuff, show you guys some things you can get relatively cheap. The Marine Corps LBV, or, yeah, Liberian Vest. LBV is even pretty cheap. You can get those, like, 10, 20 bucks on eBay, too, so. Then you just get whatever mag pouches fit your magazines. So, yeah. And ultimately generally try to avoid condor i know a lot of people love them because of how cheap they are but they're gonna fall apart and they'll fall apart more the more expensive stuff you put in them the more frequently they seem to fall apart so save your money don't waste more of it than you have to you're still gonna manage to shoot the other guys even with i mean i know people who i know someone who ran a springer pistol for the longest time and would pop people and it was hilarious because you're dropping people in cries with polar stars and you've got a little springer because you're just that sneaky. So, cool stuff. Fun things you can do. Keep that stuff in mind. Don't spend all your money. You generally don't need to. You can do this word a lot cheaper and that's what I want to prove over the upcoming months. So, cheers everyone. Stay shivalrous. And uh, remember, just because someone has cries on a polar star, they're not necessarily a massive D-bag. Until they act like a massive D-bag, at which point they kind of are, but... If they can avoid it, and they're still just a guy who happened to slowly but surely luck his way into high quality gear because one of his friends constantly sent it to him when he traded him for airsoft parts. Nah, I'm pretty happy with where I am, but yeah. Don't waste your money. You can do this cheaper, and I will make it stylish. I will prove to you it can be stylish and relatively cheap. So, cheers everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay classy. Goat.